Uh, we're joined right now by financial analyst Johnson Chuku. Good morning, uh, Johnson. And it's good to have you this morning uh, to talk about CBN's uh, Forex policy. Well, they have actually come up with different policies, uh, monetary and fiscal in some cases. Um, so far, how would you rate um, CBN's policy so far, uh, looking at where we are right now? Well, in terms of uh, the foreign exchange policies, yes. Um, if you look at the history of Nigeria's foreign exchange policies, uh, maybe we start from the, as far back as 2007, mm -hmm. uh, when in, on February 17th, 2007, the central bank came up with a policy that says that uh, foreign portfolio investors cannot invest in any Nigerian government bond that had less than one year maturity. They followed it up with a, a, public, uh, a cycle in, in 2008 where they stipulated that if they have an investment they made in an instrument that had less than one year to mature, they had to hold that money in, in manager money market for at least one year. They say what that did was they shut out foreign, a lot of foreign portfolio investors. Mm -hmm. uh, basically because investors want uh, the liquidity in the market. They want to come into the market and take out the money when they want to. And if you limit that liquidity, you scare them away. You see what has happened if we uh, fast forward to recent developments, mm -hmm. where at some point in 2005, 2004, the central bank reduced the open position limit of banks to zero. That means denying banks entire uh, liquidity. Let me explain what you mean by open position limit. Yes, it is the amount of foreign currency that a bank can carry overnight. Because banks okay. can buy, that means the amount they can buy into their position and hold to the next day and wait for somebody to buy it or sell it to sell to them. So if you have a zero open position, it simply means that if I am a customer of the bank and I come to Bank Z and say, I want, this is my 170 million or 190 million naira, I want it to buy a dollar for me. The bank cannot buy that dollar unless they have somebody selling the dollar to them that day. So it then means that it, they it was almost like a trade by barter. They have to match every order because they had no holding position. They cannot buy it today and say, okay, I'm hoping that I will sell it later in the day and they fail to sell. Mm -hmm. So automatically they denied the banks any liquidity. And what followed was that investors who had invested in the Indian instrument found it difficult to exit. Then we have uh, added to that these policies or restrictions on what items you can import and all the rest. Basic thing that happens is that when you limit the exit of investors from your market, you also shut the window and the door for entry to your market. So what we have effectively done is that we limited the only source of forex inflow into the country to export of crude oil. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I will explain that further, but let's take oh, oh, All right, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly come back to this. Now, uh, let's bring in... Uh, uh, in our Abuja studio, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Obadiah Melafia. It's good to have you this morning, uh, Obadiah. Now, the uh, CBN uh, Monetary Policy Committee uh, is, is, has a very daunting task ahead. C can you give us a perspective as to what their mandate will be and, and how they will go about achieving this mandate of trying to reposition things when it comes to the monetary policy of the CBN? Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by their mandate. I mean, their mandate from their statutory obligation or their mandate from somebody else. Um, I presume you mean their mandate from their statutory obligation. Exactly. Which is to ensure price stability uh, 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 and also, you know, to provide uh, a sound legal tender currency for the country and also to promote growth, uh, and ensure financial stability, and the rest of it. If this is what you mean, well then at present they have a very uh, daunting task ahead of them because we're facing a situation where, um, you know, uh, monetary aggregates are looking really uh, in disarray. Uh, the parallel market for the Naira has gone down to something like 360. Uh, I'm told it's down down to about 340. Improved a little bit uh, after the you know the shock of uh, you know deregulation of the of the uh, downstream uh, oil sector, uh, uh, and uh, you know that has created its own dynamics. 
and obviously uh, the parallel market has the premium has widened between the official rate which is still within 200 naira to the dollar and the official and the parallel market rate which is now around 340 360 so obviously something has to give somewhere and that is i think the dimension of the problem and uh, when you say something has to give, exactly what is it that has to give? And let me uh, bring this uh, issue that is very curious to me. I mean, uh, looking at the global price of oil, whether it goes up or goes down, it looks like it's a no-win situation for Nigeria. Exactly what is wrong here? Uh, well... You know, I think it's straightforward. I mean, uh, we, the issues are very clear. We have we are price takers as far as the oil sector is concerned, and oil has been going down and down. It has improved a little bit, ironically, because of the you know the new Avengers in the Niger Delta. Uh, it has sent its own ripples a little bit. So the oil prices, especially Brent crude, has improved slightly, somewhat. Uh, but for the long term, it's clear that we are on to very low oil prices, and that means dwindling fiscal resources and the fiscal space with which the government can maneuver to give welfare and growth to the Nigerian people. Now, in monetary economics, there is what we classically call a trilemma. And a trilemma is a situation whereby, look, you are trying to have a fixed exchange rate system, and you are also trying to preserve monetary independence, sovereign monetary independence, and ensure conditions of free capital mobility. Now, the classic trilemma is the fact that you can't do all three at the same time. You cannot. You have to release one. Either you release the exchange rate and allow it to float, or you, 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 you block capital mobility and leave the other two, or you surrender sovereign uh, monetary in order to allow the other two to work. So that is the trilemma, and the MPC will have to decide which of these three is the best to, you know, to relax on and allow the system to work. I suspect uh, it may have to be the fixed exchange rate for the simple reason that the premium between the parallel market and the official rate is unsustainable. Okay, and secondly, this system of rationing uh, scarce foreign exchange cannot continue forever. We simply have to price it in such a way that it is competitive such that only those who truly, truly need the dollar will go to the market to, to get it. Because as of now, we are simply creating, creating room for rent-seeking activities by all sorts of people. Really a tight situation to have a trilemma from yes. what you have said in there. But let, let's Very see how we get... Word exactly. mm. <laughs> All right, let, we'll bring, let's bring in other perspectives to the issue now. Let me take you to my wall to mm -hmm. uh, give us a, a better perspective as to uh, the foreign policy of... Uh, now, the foreign exchange rate is on the high side at the moment. And certainly the CBN rate and the parallel market, these are two sides generally competing against each other, if you have to put it that way. A dollar exchange rate at the CBN stands at 197 Naira. And if you go on the parallel market, it goes for 350 Naira. You can see the, 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 the disparity between that rate and the other rate there, and that's for the dollar. And if you go ahead now, the CBN rate for the pound goes for 285 Naira. And on the parallel market, it goes for 480 Naira. If you come to the euro, uh, the CBN rate goes for 223 Naira and on the parallel market it is at 385 Naira. Now, let's go back to time and take a look at how things got this bad. 
Now, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, before the establishment of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, in 1958 and the enactment of the Exchange Control Act of 1962, foreign exchange was earned by the private sector. Now, if, if, we, if we move ahead, in September 1986, now the second tier uh, 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 foreign exchange market was introduced by the uh, administration of General uh, Ibrahim Bada Mosi Babangida at that time. But before this, in 1970s and the early 80s, the Naira exchange for around uh, 90 Kobo uh, to one dollar. That's around in 1986 when uh, he became the head of state. And then by the time IBB left office in 1993, the, the Naira was exchanging for about 70 Naira to the dollar. And uh, certainly it was during his, this time that Brewery de Change were introduced into the economy in 1989. Now the Naira depreciated drastically during Abibi's regime and the industrialization uh, that a weaker exchange rate was supposed to bring about never, uh, uh, never materialized, uh, talking about the industrialization at that time. Now during General Sani Abacha's regime of five years, the official exchange rate at the Naira to the dollar never changed. It was remained at 22 uh, Naira to a dollar, as in 1993, when he became head of state. And it was the same, that 22 Naira to a dollar in 1998, when he left government. And that time, Nigeria was battling with low oil prices, as well as servicing a 33 billion dollar foreign uh, debt which was uh, eating up valuable foreign exchange now while the official rate exchange rate was 22 naira then the block marketers were selling for as high as 88 naira due to high demand induced by the banks now let's let's move ahead to see now in late 2003 oil prices began to rise steadily from around 30 dollars per barrel till it picked up at 140 uh, 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 dollars uh, per barrel uh, in uh, 2008. Now, it was also during this period of rising oil prices that Nigeria obtained its uh, 18 uh, billion dollar debt relief from the Paris Club. If we go ahead to have a better understanding, now rising oil prices certainly allowed Nigeria's foreign reserves to increase substantially, and that was also the uh, the excess crude account, which had more than. 20 billion dollars at some point in 2008 and certainly this uh, this happy events allowed governor soludo to harmonize the four different exchange rates at the time cbn interbank uh, bureau de change and uh, wire rates uh, he did this by liberalizing the foreign exchange manual and including all sorts of things that were previously not accepted at, as valid for foreign exchange requests now prior to his time one could only obtain foreign exchange to bring in raw materials. It was this period too that the Naira gained about 20% against the dollar. Now, if we move ahead, when Soludo uh, uh, assumed office in 2004, the Naira well, was trading at, uh, at 127 Naira to a dollar. That was in 2004. Now, by the time he left in 2009, it was at 147 to a dollar. Now, but in 2000, that was 2008, it actually went as low as 115 uh, naira to a dollar sometime at the at, at point. Now, if we move ahead to have a better understanding, when uh, 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 Lamido Sanusi took over office as central bank governor, he restored the interbank and WDA's uh, market that Soludo had previously banned. But there was not enough dollars to defend the Naira and keep it stable. Now, to solve this problem, he removed uh, the one-year restriction on foreign investors who wanted to buy government bonds. And that it, it cost about $30 uh, uh, to extract a barrel of uh, crude oil in, in Nigeria. So when oil was trading at $110, Nigeria had a margin of about $80 to play with. But when oil dropped to uh, $45, uh, that about uh, $80 uh, margin turned to $15 as the cost of getting the oil out of the ground still has to be incurred. Now, to put the above numbers another way, while the oil uh, prices uh, have dropped by 60%, the revenues available to Nigeria have dropped by 81%. That is, revenues have dropped uh, much more than oil prices have dropped. So Nigeria is earning almost nothing these days, and you can imagine how, imagine how disastrous it could be if uh, oil prices drop further to uh, below uh, $40 or even less. And that was what we were, uh, uh, the country was experiencing all the while. Now, in a bid to restore the strength of the Naira in the foreign exchange market, current CBN governor Godwin Murphy banned the interbank forex market like this former, like his former counterpart.
but uh, uh, Soludo did some years back. Now, Mafiele also banned 41 items from being eligible for Forex, undoing what uh, Soludo did. Now, Forex is now essentially being rationed, and the CBN is deciding who gets what and how much. Now, let's, let's get to uh, uh, Obadiah Milafia in, in Abuja. Mm -hmm. you, the, the, w let us have a basic understanding as to why there is always fluctuations when uh, uh, different CBN governors come in and the, 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 the economy and prices and forex rate cannot be sustainable or be consistent over a period of time? Why do we often have fluctuations like that? Well, well uh, uh, it's not just because of, you know, um, one central bank governor against another and so on. Uh, the reality of fluctuation has to do with the global political economy itself and, of course, the place of hydrocarbons in, in, that, in that global political economy. Uh, we are price takers as far as oil is concerned. It is subject to geopolitical challenges in the Middle East. It is subject also to, to speculation these days, especially by, you know, high finance institutions, uh, the big hedge funds and the private equity funds. Some of them are worth trillions of dollars. They have entered the oil market and, in fact, they are making more profit than some of the producing countries themselves from just speculating in oil. Uh, all these factors have contributed. There is, of course, I will not deny also that, you know, the approach, the temperament of the various uh, governors uh, can affect uh, the way. If we go back as far back as the Babangida period, uh, when the CBN was just an appendage of the Ministry of Finance and literally answerable to the Minister of Finance and the government, uh, things were not done very professionally. And uh, you mentioned how the Naira deteriorated during the Babangida period. It was not just the Naira that deteriorated. Everything collapsed. The railways stopped functioning. Um, telecommunications collapsed. Nitel collapsed. Uh, the universities collapsed, um, NEPA collapsed, uh, banditry and kidnapping became the order of the day. Nigeria as a system was on the verge of collapsing, and collapsing like the ancient Roman Empire because of the moral decay that has set into the fabric of the society. Then uh, the, the, the governor of the central bank uh, could be called at midnight to simply, you know, make dollars available for whatever they wanted to do. So that is how the system was run. Uh, we are grateful that uh, under Obasanjo, uh, General Obasanjo, uh, President Obasanjo, there were reforms to make the CBN more autonomous. But I'm afraid that we carried that autonomy a little bit too far. Because the 2007 CBN Act was never properly debated in the National Assembly. Half of the uh, parliamentarians had lost the elections. They were not coming back. Uh, it is alleged that, uh, you know, uh, people went to them at, at midnight with, with bags of, uh, of, of, of some, some uh, foreign currency and simply asked to endorse that is how the CBN Act was passed. And unless you are God or a saint, it would be difficult not to abuse yeah. such power. Okay, uh, Mr. Melafia, if I may CBN. come in here. Power um, without sorry to cut power. you in there now. Um, you, you did say something, uh, Johnson, earlier about uh, uh, the bonds. Um, MFLA seems to have gone back to the Soludo solution which uh, sort of like, you know, uh, improved uh, the Naira. But th that's another issue entirely. Many people have been saying, look, it is better to devalue or just float the Naira to encourage, you know, uh, a realistic demand for, for Forex instead of actually, you know, um, an outright ban on allocations. Will that solve the problem that the Naira has today? Well, it won't solve the problem that Naira has today because the problem that Naira has is multifaceted. And what I mean by multifaceted are there issues of supply. 
mm -hmm. uh, in the, to the extent that our crude price, the crude price has dropped to about 45, we are doing close to $50 now. Mm -hmm. Our production has dropped about 1.2, 1.4 million barrels. So the total national receipts uh, will have, has dropped in terms of foreign exchange earnings. Mm -hmm. But it will, uh, it will begin to address some of the problems. So it won't solve the problem, it's not a silver bullet. But you're going to see some improvements in some areas, and I'll tell you why. What basically we should be looking at, how do we diversify the sources of foreign exchange earnings? Mm -hmm. Because we have a regime, a foreign exchange policy, that has shut out other sources of inflows, we have narrowed the pipe for inflow of foreign, foreign uh, exchange into the country. There are several, let me look at, let's look at the um, sources that Nigeria earn foreign exchange. You have export of crude, which are a major line of export. Mm -hmm which account for about 90% of our foreign exchange mm -hmm. at the best of times. Now, you have the other sources, export of other goods and services, particularly other goods, things like timber. I know there was a time we banned timber, cocoa, uh, even cement, we're exporting cement today. You mean, I keep hearing that we don't export much, but the key thing is that we must have a policy that will encourage that to happen. The other aspect, the other sources of inflow are what you call home remittances. You know your Western Union, your MoneyGram, that's another source. It might not be as huge, but it adds up. Then you have the foreign direct and foreign portfolio investors. What we have done as a result of the policy we adopted of the fixed exchange rate, you have, we have shut out the other three, which is the home remittances, foreign portfolio investment, and export of non-oil goods. Let me explain to you what, how it happens. Because those who export goods, because local prices have gone up as a result of exchange rate uh, 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 depreciation. So those who export goods buy their input with at the current market prices, local market prices, which are not longer priced at 197 because what rules in the shop floor today is a parallel market. Okay. So when they buy those input, their export goods at one uh, at 320 exchange rate effectively, they will export those goods. They are compared by CBN to remit the funds through central bank and collect money naira at 187. So it becomes an outright loss for them. And therefore, a lot of people who are into export are winding down their export activities. I know have friends who are exporting late that have shut, uh, shut down their export activities. So whatever amount we are getting from export of non-oil oil, oil, oil products have declined because the exchange rate at which the exporters are compelled to sell their proceeds it's no longer market reflective and it's leading them to a direct loss. Second aspect, home remittances. Mm -hmm. I don't know which are, who will allow his relation to send money to him so they can go and collect that Western, for Western Union the Bank or MoneyGram and collect that $1,000 at $197 when you know that that $1,000 will command $320, mm -hmm. $340 in the open market. So what is happening now is that Nigerians who are enjoying home remittances are asking their relations, pay money to whoever. Let somebody in Nigeria give me uh, Naira. And some of those dollars are no longer coming to the country. Mm. And then you look at foreign portfolio investors. Foreign portfolio investors will only uh, come into any market where they are short, are short of liquidity. Liquidity in the sense that they should be able to sell and convert their money back, back to their, own to, currency. To their hard currency. Mm. So if they can't do that, they won't come in. So what we rather see is you have seen exit. In 2004, we saw a negative foreign portfolio investment flow into the country for after a very long time. And then it has happened again the first quarter of this year, where the amount of money taken out by foreign portfolio investors is more than the amount, amount of money they brought in. So in effect, we've shut out the three windows. We're leaving only one. And there's no way. What we should be taking out if we liberalize? And, and, and some, some experts have said that the, the central bank itself is actually at the root of the uh, forex crisis that Nigeria has today. To what extent? I mean, looking at the different policies, somersaults, you know, comes up with this, withdraws it, and comes up with another policy tomorrow. How? To what extent is this really affecting, uh, you know, uh, forex um, challenges that we have today? Well, I wouldn't put it that way. I wouldn't say they are responsible or solely responsible. Um, like I mentioned, there are exogenous factors. Mm. Exogenous factors are those factors are outside the control of, of the CBA or even the country. The price of crude. Now, we also have added to that the uh, breaching of uh, production activities, the shutting of uh, oil production because of uh, the crisis in the Niger Delta. But then, you also have to recognize that, as it stands today, the Central Bank Board of Governors mm. cannot be seen 
to be going head on, to begin to head on collision with the president's position. The president's position has been, I have not seen the wisdom in allowing the Naira to depreciate or to adjust. I will not preside over the, uh, uh, what they can, I think the burial uh, of, the Naira. of the Naira. But has it so, not naturally so depreciated? In, in effect, in effect, the CBM Board of Governors, the members of the Monetary Policy Committee are to some extent constrained mm. by the position of the, of the President. Oh, okay, Johnson, I'm going to put you on hold and uh, put Obadiah on hold. Uh, let's get to Port Harcourt and give you updates of uh, how the strike is going on there. And our correspondent Uche Okoro is standing by in there in Port Harcourt. Uche, good morning. Can you give us updates of what's going on in River State? Um, good morning, Mike, and thanks for having me. Um, this is day two of the, uh, the strike, which was called by um, it's, it's a, a section of labor in, um, in the country and, of course, River State as well. Um, because we have, in, in as much as we have a faction um, uh, of the NLC at the national level, there are also two factions of, the, of labor here in River State as well. Um, on day one of the strike, um, it, it witnessed it was characterized by um, zero tolerance here in, the seat, in, in, in River State. Um, of course, um, workers in the private sector were, of course, at their duty posts. The civil servants were at their duty posts. The judiciary um, staff were at their duty posts as well. Banks were open to customers. Schools were open to pupils and so on. Um, many had expected that day two um, of uh, this strike would, um, you know, be, um, experience some um, improvement on, uh, in terms of compliance, compliance level. But unfortunately, this is the complex of the River State Secretariat. And just like yesterday, work has resumed as normal. As you can see, um, you know, at that um, particular, uh, just behind me is the, the entrance to the River State Secretariat. And you can see cars are still trooping in. Um, people are resuming, um, you know, for work here, um, you know, t um, today and in, in Port Harcourt. Yesterday, um, workers gathered at the Secretariat, um, but unfortunately, um, a factional um, leader of the of Labour, Beatrice Itubo, had, you know, barricaded the gate, preventing workers from gaining entrance. But of course, the head of service, uh, Rufus Godwin, um, you know, um, stormed the entrance of the Secretariat and forced the gates open, thereby allowing workers to, you know, make their way into the Secretariat complex. But today, um, resumption of work did not experience or witness any such resistance from Labour. Um, rather, the Labour leaders who are against the strike were the ones I saw on ground today monitoring the normal resumption of work. So yes, day one of the strike, zero tolerance. Day two of the strike, zero tolerance as well. Um, zero um, compliance as well in um, um, in, the, in the city of Port Harcourt. All right, Tucho Koro reporting for us uh, from the city of Port Harcourt there on day two of uh, NLC's industrial action. We still have Obadiah Melafia, former deputy governor of the Central Bank, right there in Abuja. And, uh, of course, uh, Johnson Wachuku is here. Now, let's uh, even look at uh, the sustainability. And I'm throwing this question at you of... Uh, Okay, let, let me remain with you. Uh, we don't have a badaya there. Uh, this CBN Forex policies of delisting some luxury items, uh, you know, from Forex and non-essential uh, goods, how sustainable really is it? Well, uh, my approach would have been a different, uh, a different approach from what, what the Central Bank did. My approach would have been the federal government, the fiscal authorities, mm -hmm. would have used trade policy to determine what Nigeria does not need to import or uh, impose high duty tariff on those items. As it stands today, those items are not banned from importation into the country. They are only saying, Central Bank is only saying you cannot use the official, uh, any of the official windows. So what has happened is that demand for those products have gone to the parallel market. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the pressure we have in the parallel market. Unfortunately, the parallel market is very shallow. So when you push whole set of items into a market that is very shallow, then you, you, you push up the price because the demand will actually supply. So uh, if we had used a trade policy to say, look, if you have to bring in this item, you have to pay 100% duty or thereabouts, or we're saying, look, outrightly, we don't want this item into the country, it would have been a different thing. But to push them into the parallel market, and unfortunately, the uh, uh, um, Manufacturing Association of Nigeria has come out to say, look, some of the items banned from assessing forex at the official window are input materials for their productive activities. Mm -hmm. So what we have also done is to constrain them and that's socially why we're seeing a slowdown in economic growth and possibly a, some level of retrieval in the, in, the, in the manufacturing sector. So we need to look at how do we want to position the economy. That's for me, that's really the starting point. 
then our monetary policies, our fiscal policies, and then our trade policy will be aligned towards position in the economy. You had asked a question earlier, and which is the dilemma that Central Bank has. Mm. So what should they do? Uh, when they meet uh, next Monday and Tuesday, at the Monetary Policy Committee meet. And my position is this. The federal government has said we want to grow the economy, we want to restore growth. In the last quarter of last year, we grew by 2.11%. Because when we talk of the growth for last year, which was 2.78% entire last year, we must not lose cognizance of the fact that last quarter is what is signposted the rate of growth. And last quarter was 2.11. When we see the first quarter of this year, I'm sure it may be worse, I believe it may be worse than that. So if we want to restart the economy by the government in, 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 um, implementing an expansionary fiscal policy, mm. then the central bank must also align its policies to be in conformity with the drive of the fiscal authorities. Okay. All right, let, let me bring in, uh, we, we, we have re-established the signals with our Abuja studio now. We still have uh, Obadiah Milafia with us in the studio. Now, let, let me talk about the issue of devaluation. Now, there is still the call by the IMF one way or the other for uh, the, either direct devaluation or somehow liberalize or be flexible kind of however way, uh, whatever term is used, that how healthy it is for the country or for Nigeria to devalue, especially when the president is saying we are not ready to devalue the Naira. Well, uh, I'm a bit uh, worried by the whole turn of discussion. Uh, since autonomy has been given to the Central Bank of Nigeria, I don't think it is wise for the executive to be making pronouncements on monetary policy uh, in this manner necessarily. Uh, of course, there's only one government, and the CBN is part of that government. But if you know, the legislators in their wisdom have delegated a responsibility for monetary policy to the central bank. They should be allowed to do that job without anyone breathing down their neck. Uh, I don't think it is healthy for the economy. Those kind of discussions should take place behind doors. Uh, they should not be, you know, the CBN should not be put in a position where it is on the defensive. Look. There are only three exchange re regimes uh, fundamentally that exist. The fixed rate, uh, the one extreme, the floating rate at the extreme, and in the middle, uh, the managed, what is known as the managed float. Now, every country has a sovereign right to decide which exchange rate regime it has. I don't think it is up to the IMF to tell us and IMF statutes also acknowledge the right of countries to choose their uh, exchange rate system. Of course, there are various gradations in between, uh, but every country should look at its circumstances. And looking at the circumstances of Nigeria now, we should be asking ourselves, is the fixed exchange rate system solving our problems? I mentioned the trilemma earlier. Now, one of the angles of that trilemma will have to give in if the other two are allowed to exist as monetary conditions. Now, the MPC, Monetary Policy Committee, will have to decide early next week which of, this, of the trilemmas to let go so that, you know, there will be equilibrium in the system. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the debate has not been particularly helpful. Uh, we need to look at our whole circumstances. How much is our foreign reserves now? What do we have, you know, in the um, in the in, in the you know safety net account? Uh, you know, um, how much is the demand, and uh, can we continue to sustain such a wide premium between the parallel market and the official rate? Uh, it is very clear that uh, the answer to that is no. Now, one option is to depreciate the currency. I, I don't use the word devaluation because devaluation is strictly where you have a fixed exchange rate system. Ours is a managed float. So within a managed float, the language to use is depreciation rather than outright devaluation, which takes place when you have a fixed exchange rate system.
Okay, so, uh, uh, Mr. Badaya Melafia. That will have to take place. If we decide, now let's listen. Yes. If we decide that, look, we cannot keep the premium and we cannot continue to use dwindling foreign reserves to, 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 you know, to fight to sustain the Naira, then obviously some form of depreciation will be necessary. But it should not just be the monetary aspects, you know, the dollar aspect of the whole thing. We must have a robust fiscal uh, strategy to reboot the economy of this country uh, and to move away from dependence on on the rentier paradigm of, of development. Okay, uh, Obadiah Melafia, former deputy governor of the CBN, that's the Central Bank of Nigeria. Thank you very much uh, for your input. We still have uh, Johnson uh, Mwachuku here. He jo said something. Sorry, Johnson Chuku. Johnson, Johnson Chuku, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, now, um, uh, Mr. Melafia did say something very important there, that monetary policy alone, uh, you know, uh, cannot, um, you know, turn around uh, this economy, looking at the CBN and the monetary policy, that a fiscal, a sound fiscal policy will help, you know, to jack up this um, this economy. And I remember um, not too long ago, the MPC, that's the Monetary Policy Committee, recommended 220 Naira to the dollar. How much difference will this make? Well, um, uh, the fact, I, I mean, he hit the nail on the head by saying, look, the issue is not um, uh, moving the exchange rate to a new band. It's to allow for flexibility in exchange rate. Mm. So that, and my approach is that CBN should reintroduce um, what they call, they used to have, the interbank market. Mm. And then CBN should free itself from the burden of being the sole supplier of the market and just be a market maker. And how can CBN be a market maker? CBN will sell into the market when there is demand and buy from the market when there is excess supply. So in that case, they be a market maker. Um, but like the fact is this, like I mentioned earlier, for you to position the economy, you need to have a harmony between your exchange rate, your monetary policies, your fiscal policies, and your trade policy. Those three policies must be aligned to drive the economy the way you want it to be. Do we want? You see, the first thing is this, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm expecting the government to come up with an economic blueprint. The economic blueprint will start from the end in mind. And the end in mind should be how do we want to position the general economy. Are we going to be a producing economy or a service-oriented economy? My approach would be that if a country has a 180 million population, you need to be a manufacturing hub. You need to be a manufacturing economy so that you can create employment. Once we have that, then we have the appropriate policies, monetary and fiscal, right. to drive uh, economic activities. All right, Johnson Chiku, thank you very much for talking to us on TVC Breakfast. My pleasure. Thank